So around about this time last year, we were on this exact same venue having a look at the silver fishing on here. I've been coming down on the open matches I ran on here, which were anything goes, carp, silverfish, whatever you can catch. And we've been doing all right, catching plenty of silvers with the odd carp in amongst them. Um, but they stopped running those open matches and probably a couple of months ago, since obviously lockdowns lifted and all that sort of thing, uh, a local lad, Gary Rogers, he's come down and started running some silverfish only open. So obviously we were keen to jump on those and have a bit of a play. But sort of the reason for the video is to go through the differences of what we were doing before and what we're doing now. The biggest thing you'll find is when it was pretty much just myself or one or two others fishing for silvers, you had a lot more fish to sort of draw into your peg and you get away with things being a bit more crude, feeding a bit more bait, and they were a lot, lot keener to come shallower and up in the water. But obviously the different scenario now is you've got 20 to 24 anglers all fishing for silverfish. So you're just noticing they spread out more and the just wanted to sort of look at the differences, the tweaks that we've done to sort of keep the bites coming as you're now fishing a totally different match. But we're gonna run through rigs, bait, feeding, and a few other little bits and pieces that will hopefully help you if you come into a venue like this where you're targeting silverfish either in a silver silvers only match or just using it to sort of fill the gaps in between the carp. So we'll go onto the rigs and then hopefully catch a few fish. So last time when we had a look at rigs, it was a lot more focused on shallow rigs, having three or four of those set up a nice strung out through the water rig, just nicking the odd fish. And to be fair, deck fishing didn't really come into it, but obviously with more people targeting them, that's what we're spending 90% of the time doing now. You will catch the odd fish shallow. Um, so we've still got rigs set up for it, but to be fair, it's just filling those gaps rather than last time. That was pretty much the mainstay of the attack. So as we said, everything's kind of gone on to refining stuff down, making it a little bit neater, a little bit more delicate so you can spot those little bites and it does catch a, a few extra fish so moving on to the floats first of all um, these are some that nathan lum makes to be fair it was andy who's put us onto these um, so what you've got is a 1.2 mil solid tip um, and that's probably the most important thing out lot obviously the solid tip's got no buoyancy in it um, so it's offering less resistance to the fish you can dot it down nicely does make it a little bit harder to see but generally you're fishing fairly short anyway so it's not not an issue um, that's coupled with a nice slim body and a carbon stem so obviously if you if you're laying your rig in it just falls nice and naturally we all know the score carbon stems nice for fishing through the water um, that's the blue map elastic i don't know i'm a bit unsettled with elastic so that's what i'm on at the moment i kind of like it and I kind of don't, so we won't talk about that too much, but something nice and light, nice and forgiving, but strong enough that you can swing the odd fish. Um, moving on to the shotting pattern, again, nice and simple. It's all number 10. So what we've got, we've got five number 10s as a bulk, and then three droppers spread probably six inches apart, and then a little six inch up length. That's just one of the Guru pre-tied ones, F1 pellets, and does the job no problem. So that's the main rig we're gonna be looking at today. Um, that you can pretty much replicate that on the short line and the long line but when it comes to plumbing up and picking the area that you're going to be fishing that's really important because what you've got here it's really silty it's quite an old lake it's been here for years so you've got a lot of silt on the bottom that's going to cause you issues if you don't choose the right place to fish so i think that's going to be the next thing to go into plumbing up finding the right area and eventually we'll get onto a bit of fishing so when it comes to picking the area to fish on your short line it's not a specific distance. It's about sort of working out in your peg where the silt is, where the slope starts, and that's what we need to be looking for. So first important thing is getting the right plummet. This is a 30 grams, so quite a nice heavy one, flat base, and you'll see why that's so important as we start to plumb up. So obviously that's, that's long rib we were looking at before. And if we spin around, we'll show you sort of the wrong thing and the right thing to do. So if we ship out, a little bit further i've got my little mate on a deck chair opposite as my marker um, and if we go too far this is a section past where we want to be fishing you, as you drop that plummet in you can sort of feel it stick in the silt you get a bit of resistance and then it sort of pings itself free and you'll probably notice if we sort of drag him around a bit you can see already there's bubbles starting to come up 
and that's just from knocking that plummet around a couple of times. So that shows you how much silt is actually down there. So they're the sort of places you want to avoid. Obviously, your long line that you're going to be fishing 13, 14 metres, um, that's inevitable. You're not going to avoid the silt on that. So it's going to be one of those where you've got to deal with it. Um, but if we come back just one section more, so four sections, two and a top kit, you can see straight away how much firmer that is. You can sort of donk that round. It feels a lot firmer as you drop, drop that plummet down. A little bit, a little bit under depth actually. We'll stick him up an inch, but you can feel straight away that you've not got that resistance as you're lifting the plummet up. It just comes straight up, so it's a lot firmer bottom. And you can obviously see it's, see it's come up probably three or four inches. So we're just onto that slope, and that's the area you, you want to be targeting. Obviously, if you're if you're out there in that silty stuff, you're going to get loads of fish fizzing, and it's just going to make it really hard to get bites. So we'll nick that section off and that's pretty much where we're going to be targeting today and i've screwed myself with a roller because it's too far away so we'll move that in a second but yeah that's pretty much how we go about finding the, the area to fish and depending where you are on the lake and the venue you're fishing that that can vary that could be two sections out it could be five sections out it's just finding that nice area nice bit of firm area where you can bait you can get clean bites and catch more fish at the end of the day. So we'll get a bit of bait sorted and try and catch some fish. So I keep promising we're going to fish, honestly, we are. But first, we need to get a bit of bait sorted. And the selection we've got today is extremely complicated. We've got maggots, we've got some micros that we've soaked. Um, to be fair, we've probably over soaked them, which you can kind of soak them, get them to as you would do normally, add a bit more, and you just mould them into a little ball and they're, they're just sort of pellety enough that they break down into actual pellets again but get them as far as you can um, and when it comes to the initial feed we're not feeding an awful lot it's not like your big natural venues where you want to want to be balling loads of bait in this short line especially is just going to be a case of feed enough to get a few fish there and then just top it up as you're fishing um, so in a match situation i'd have this short line and probably a long line at sort of 13 to 40 meters where I'd feed a little bit heavier and that's just going to be my line for rest in this short line we're going to spend most of the time here uh, and then if we come if late down in the session we need to refeed it get a few more fish there we can go back out on that long line so to kick this one off all we're going to feed is literally sort of a little little nugget of micros just squoze so it gets down to the bottom nice and quickly one of those and then a decent pinch of maggots, what's that? That's probably 50. I'm not gonna sit and count them because that would be exceedingly boring. So that's gonna go straight out on that short line. Try not to take count my pole in the process. Ship him out, make sure you're lined up to your marker and all that stuff that we always say and dunk him in. So that's that short line. And sort of time-wise, from there, I go and bait that long line. We're not going to do that today and probably bait one other line, be it sort of down the edge in some shallower water or maybe a second long line. It just depends where you've drawn on the day. But that'll give that a minute or two to settle and then you can pretty much go straight in on it. So we'll hope that that's not screwed the swim. So going in, just a single maggot is probably your best option. I've played about with doubles, but it's sort of one of those reverse psychology things where you almost end up catching the smaller greedier fish on it so i found you're better off just going in single maggot and generally you'll catch big fish small fish and all fish in between so it's not worth worrying about different updates just keep it nice and simple so you'll probably notice we've got little pot on the end and i generally like to start feeding through a pot just keeping a little bit more accurate and then as soon as you've got some fish there you can start being a bit more positive feeding by hand so We'll pretend that's had a couple of minutes to sort of rest. You'll have a few fish there straight away. There's plenty in here. So little, little pinch of maggots in the pot. And obviously dunk them in the water, which just keeps the maggots in, just stops you spilling any, keeps it a bit more accurate. And the mate on his deck chair has disappeared. So I'm just lining up with a deck chair now. So feed him in first. And um, when it comes to laying in the rig, you sort of want to swing it out because you've obviously got a bit of a slope that you're fishing on so if you can swing him out and lay him out and then bring it back towards you and you just want that bait falling through naturally and you've got the carbon stem on the float that's gonna you can sort of watch it down you'll see the bulk come in 
and then your three droppers come in and just dot that down perfectly if I've got my shot in right, which it looks like I might have. That's a bite straight away. So that's just little tiny fish, little skimmer. Should we be brave and swing him? Whee. But you can see how quickly you get covered in jizz. Um, so little little skimmers, they're sort of the main, main fish that you're gonna, gonna be catching on here. But we didn't really get a chance to show any lifting and dropping, which is generally quite important. Um, so fresh maggot on there. Obviously, if your bait's been damaged, you wanna be changing it every single time. I was one of those that used to sort of get in the habit of trying to catch as many fish on a maggot thinking, oh, it's making me more efficient, I'm being quicker. And you just don't get bites on it if it's not right. So you'll notice this time, again, same thing, but we've not fed. Because it's quite a small fish and we've only recently sort of fed that initial feed. We'll see if we can get, get a couple of three fish off each little pot of maggots. So that was a dead quick bite. So it's unlikely that everything was eaten. But you can see that's pretty much reached the full bottom of the descent, little indication there. But what you want to be doing from an efficiency side of things is rather than kind of lifting it out, laying it in totally every time, literally like that little tiny strike if you get an indication and just lay it back in to the side so you can lay it full through again and it just gets you down to where you need to be without wasting too much time. There's a snag in the peg, James. Why is there a snag in the peg? No, it's a carp. It, the snag's moving. That's the only issue on here. You do hook a few carp. He didn't even know he was hooked. But generally, because it's one of those things that happened, we're fishing fairly light, so chances are we could well get broke. But just keep a bit of fee going in. And when it comes to play, yeah, he's come off. But it's generally a case that if you keep, keep, keep the top kit down and pull fairly hard, it's surprising how many just come straight in. Um, they sort of wallow up and you can net them pretty quick half the time, so it's not too much of an issue. Or it goes the other way like that and it just pings off so you can get your rig back. And that's the most important thing is getting your rig back safely without trashing it, which we've managed to do. So repeat the process. Obviously, we fed a little bit of bait as we were playing that fish, just keep them there, but it's probably disturbed the, disturbed the swim a little bit. So a few more in there. But that often you do find that if you go through a little spell of not getting any indications or you're not getting any, any fish there, a lot of the time it will be that you've got a big old carp in the peg. So generally, once that's out of the way, um, it settles down and you start getting bites again. So hopefully that's going to be the case. Although with us pleasure fishing and being the only ones here, they could prove a, a bit of an issue. After hooking that carp, we've gone straight in, hooked another, had him and hooked another. So it's finally starting to settle down a bit. We've caught a few skimmers and hopefully it's gonna stay like that now. You do find with these carp, you get little spells of them and then they'll back off. And obviously we've got it worse today with being one of the few people on the lake in a match that seem to spread themselves around a bit. But we've started feeding a little bit more by hand and it has been quite important to sort of get that bit of noise coming through and just brings new fish into your peg. Um, but at the moment we sort of, we've been feeding a bit, so it feels like there's a few fish there. So we're back on the pot being a little bit more accurate just to zone them in. And we've been getting a few of the better skimmers. So we'll lay them in, just 20, probably 15, 20 maggots in the pot, lay it out, letting him fall through. And you can just see a little bite on the drop there. A little bit aggressive on that strike, but lay them out again. Ideally, if you can not get too overexcited when it goes. That was a little fish. So someone took that, yeah, little fish on the drop. But little rud on the drop. But that's sort of the problem. If you were to go in an all-out shallow attack, you would, would get bites, you'd catch plenty of them, but they don't really add up to an awful lot. And that's sort of where the Balkan, Balkan three droppers comes, comes in. So you can bomb it, bomb it down past them a little bit. We won't feed this time as we've only just fed. So that should be getting to the bottom now. So again, swing him out, get your float over your spot, over your marker, and just let him fall down. And again, just 
with that little 1.2 tip you can just see everything come in see your droppers come in and little bite there we're getting excited because we've not caught anything for a bit but just little strike and then you can let him fall through again just lifting it enough that you sort of the distance from the bulk to the hook off the deck and you can just be nice and efficient any miss bites like that you're straight in falling through again and I think the fact that it's falling through not only are you catching the eye it's not it feels like there's fresh bait going through there's nothing that's sort of dangerous and so often you find that all you'll get the bites just as it's as it's touching down on deck a little skimmer but it's just a case of working out when it comes to feeding sort of little fish like that I'm sort of thinking yeah we'll give him because we've waited a little bit for a bite get that smeg off the line wait a little bit for the bite probably eating the majority of it so feed a little bit with it fresh maggot on Your last scout, but keeping it when it's not as prolific you want to be keeping it to the pot keeping it nice and accurate keeping them zoned in but once the bites start kind of coming a little bit a little bit faster there's more fish about you can really start kind of revving it up a bit by feeding by hand feeding more regularly and just getting more fish in the, in the peg but that's the thing it's, it's a hard one to sort of give any hard and fast rules to you're just working it out as you go along, going by how the fish, fish are reacting, how quick the bites come in. There we go. Little, oh, miss a roller. But he is just about swingable. But you can see sort of 20, 30 seconds for a bite, even if they are them smaller skimmers, what they, two, three ounce maybe, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, you can see how quick you can do a weight. Like, if you're catching like that all day, you'll, you'll, you'll do a ridiculous weight, but there we go. So again, just dip in that pot. Just keep everything in, on your marker, and then lay your rig in. Again, laying it past or at, at, a, at a sort of an angle, making sure it's falling into that slope and just following him down. You'd be amazed just how delicate some of the bites can be, even like that. That's a bit of an indication on the way in. That might even be on. Yeah, I missed it. But some of the bites are not. You, you've got a kind of a 1.2 tip dotted right down, and you're still, it might not even go under all the way. And they're the sort of bites that, with a thicker tip flow, with more bristle showing, you're just not going to see. And that's the difference. If you're seeing an extra one out of every 10 bites, and that's one in 10 fish that you're going to be ahead of everyone else. But there we go. So that's settled. Just give him a little lift and drop. Watch him down again. Sort of 10 seconds, no more than that. Little indication there. But don't be afraid of doing it. Quite often you'll find as well, especially with a bigger fish, when you actually go to sort of lift and drop, there'll be a fish on that you've not even had an indication of. Um, is he going to be a netter? Didn't, we definitely didn't need to net him, but we're going to. And I'll hit the cameras in the process as well. But he's hooked a little bit deep, so I think that little indication we saw first would have been, would have been the bite. But he's held on to it. Yep. But you can see it's all just working out the feeding. And when it comes to a match, obviously you'll get spells like this where everything's going nicely, um, there's fish there and it's all good. But what you will find, after a little bit, it'll either start drying up, you'll be waiting longer for bites, you'll try sort of feeding a little bit more and you can just feel it sort of fizzing out. And that's a time where in a match your other lines will come into play. So you're keeping them topped up occasionally, maybe every... 15 20 minutes just taking a minute to drop a little bait, bit of bait on your long line so that's ready to go so when you do start getting those weird spells be it sort of the bites drying up or you're suddenly getting lots of foul lookers or weird bites that you can't hit 
You can give this a little nugget of micros, bigger handful of um, bigger handful of maggots. Is that cut net? Skimmer. A little better one. And you can we'll see. Slightly bigger one. But there you go, fish like that. If you're catching one of them a bung, and that's like that's a bigger, smaller one if it makes sense. Um, and you can tell the big the bigger ones are normally the jumpers that sort of scare you to death as they come out 100 miles an hour. But see what happens with this. We'll kind of keep the system with a pot because at the moment that's going quite nicely. Um, but it might be worth in a second sort of trying try a bit more throw and see if you can get a few more fish in the peg and getting a few more bites just as it's, as it's touching down. Because at the moment you're seeing it sort of settling then going as opposed to sometimes when they're sort of on it, they're following the bait down, you'll be getting the bites literally just, you'll see that last dropper come in and the bites will be pretty much now as that maggot's touching down. But we'll give it sort of 10, 15 seconds. There you go, missed a bite. I think generally they miss bites like that, those little tiny roach and rud that are kind of rushing in that just aren't taking it properly, but that's gonna happen regardless. Oh, oh is there a carp? I don't think that's a skimmer. 